Okay, let's start with running in place. Punches, jab, cross, hook, uppercut. Keep your feet moving, keep your hands up. Keep your weight forward. So your back heel <clears throat> is off the floor. You don't want to lean forward, that offers your face, but you want your weight forward so that you can move easily. And now we're gonna shuffle in the box. Keep your hands up, side, back, side, front, and then go the other way. Knees. Make sure that the, you keep the standing leg bent. Other side. steps and if you forgot to start your watch like I did start it now kicks front side back Okay, so that was six exercises. Run in place, punches, shuffle, knees, ladder steps, and kicks. 30 seconds each, two more times through, and then after you do it, come back and stretch. Okay, so once you've done your three sets times, three times through, reach up, reach over to one side. Other side. And straight up to the front. Reach for the floor. Keep your chin up. Over to one side, grab your ankle, pull your chest to your knee. Down in the side stretch, both heels are on the floor. If you want more stretch, put this elbow inside your knee and push the knee open. Turn, stretch your hip flexor, make sure that your ankle is out past your knee, not tucked in here like this. Straighten up your legs. All my toes are facing in the same direction. My chin is up, my back is flat. I reach my chest toward my front knee. That stretches this hamstring. Also stretches this calf a little bit. Come to the center, toes straight forward, push your knees out. Other side, grab your ankle. Make sure your chin is up. Down in the side stretch. And 
turn, stretch your hip flexor. Straighten out your legs. Toes all in that direction, chin up, back flat, chest to your knees, stretch your hamstring. And then have a seat. One foot out in front of you, pull the other foot across the knee. Okay, if you can tuck this foot and still keep your whole butt on the floor, do it. If you can't, if you have one side of your one hip up when you do that, keep the leg extended. <clears throat> Whichever knee is up, take the opposite elbow, put it outside the knee, and push the knee across. <clears throat> Other side. Okay, feet out. Make sure your chin is up and your toes are pointed up. If you roll your toes in, you're not getting much of a stretch. So chin is up, reach your elbows toward the floor. Getting closer, spill elbows to the floor, and bring your feet together and reach your hands as far out as they'll go. You don't want your toes pointed. Toes should be pulled back, chin should be up. So you're not here, but you're here. Pull your feet in, heels are on the floor, rock back and forth. Then put your hands on the floor and straighten out your legs. Okay, so we're going to start with squat lunge. When you do a lunge, you want to make sure, I generally step back when I do a lunge, you can step forward if you want to, but I find it's easier to get myself in the proper position for this knee if I step back. You want your knee over your ankle. If you have your knee out here and your ankle tucked behind it, that puts a lot of stress on your knee. So you want to step back here far enough that this is straight up and down. So when you do, I'm going to go squat, lunge. Squat, lunge, squat, lunge, squat, lunge. Okay, then I'm going to have a seat. And I'm going to put my hands way up here, not back here behind my hips, but way up here in front of my hips, out far enough that they're not bumping into my body. Then I put my feet flat on the floor and lift my butt up in the air so my back is in tabletop. This is called tabletop. You're going to keep your feet where they are. You're not going to let your butt touch the floor. You're going to pull back to an L sit. So forward, lift your hips and push them back. And the last one is called a sit out. Put yourself here, hands and feet are on the floor. It's not a plank like you would do a push up. My butt's way in the air. So I can pick one hand up, touch the opposite foot. The foot that I'm touching is going to shoot through the hole that I made when I picked my hand up. Then I bring it back and I go the other way. So we did squat lunge, we did tabletop to L-sit, and we did sit-outs. We did 30 seconds of each one, 
I want you to do one more set, 30 more seconds of each one. Okay, this month we're working on speed. This week we're working on explosive speed. So we're gonna do a drill with front kicks. So we're gonna start with front with uh, breaking down the front kick. We're gonna do a front leg kick. We're working on speed that one's closer to the target, it's faster. It may not be as powerful because you don't have as much rotation, but it's much faster. So you're gonna start here. You're gonna prop your knee comes up. You push out, knee in and down. You're hitting with the ball of your foot. If you're wearing shoes and you can't bend, you can hit with the bottom of your foot, but don't hit with your toes. Okay, we're gonna do 10 on each side. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And then 10 on the other side. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, then you're going to get a partner. So if there's somebody in your house who also takes karate, they're going to do this with you. If not, you're going to very politely beg someone in your house who doesn't take karate to do this drill with you. And they're going to get a target and they're going to be somewhere around you. So you're going to start here in your guard stance and they're going to call to you and you're going to turn to them as fast as you can and kick with the front leg. Okay. So if they're there, you can't turn and kick with this leg. I want you to turn and kick with that one. I know that's not necessarily the fastest way to go, but I want you to be thinking the fastest way to get to a front leg front kick. Okay. So you start here, your partner calls you. They call from the back, turn, kick. They call from the side, turn, kick. They call from the back, turn, kick. From the front, turn, kick. Okay, so I want them to offer you about 20 different targets. Then I want you to do the same for them. Okay, even if they don't take karate, if they don't take karate, this is a perfect time for you to practice your front kick because you can talk to them about chamber, kick, re-chamber, set it down. You can practice with them what part of the foot hits the target. Okay, then once you've done that, your partner's gonna come back with you and they're gonna hold the target. And your response, your kick, comes in response to them holding out the target and them pulling the target away comes in response to your chamber. So you're gonna stand in your guard stance and your partner is gonna hold the target out. And as soon as you see the target out, you're gonna throw a front leg front kick. Well, as soon as they see your knee come up, they're gonna pull the, pat, the target out of the way. So the goal is to get from here to there before they can pull the target away, okay? So they can't just do this. They're gonna bring it up and when they see your knee come up, they try to pull it away. As soon as you see the target come up, you wanna make the kick happen as fast as you can. You wanna do 10 on each leg and then trade jobs with your partner. Okay, you guys have three forms this cycle. The beginner form is action karate form one, the intermediate form is action karate form seven, and the advanced form is action karate form 10. This month we're working on speed. This week we're working on explosive speed. So we're gonna do the first few moves of each form, and then I'm gonna to explain to you what I want you to do with speed. So action karate forms one is not new. You, this is, there's nothing new here. You, this is review for you guys. So we start here, action karate form one, Back fist, punch, back leg roundhouse kick, slide up side kick, back fist, kneel and punch. Okay, so what I want to happen is first, you're gonna do it, I'm gonna give you the count. So I'm gonna say one, and before I finish saying one, two, you have to have done the next move, okay? So one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, so you're gonna do it again now. Start here, actually start in your guard stance, and I'm gonna count. And this is an honor system, because I can't see what you're doing. But before I finish saying the word, you should be done the move. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, we're gonna go a little faster. Start back in your guard stance. One, two, three, Four, five, six. 
Okay, so now what I want you to do is I want you to, you, we've talked about phrases before. The phrase is all the moves in one direction, so it's all the moves to the one attacker. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna do that whole phrase and we're gonna take out the space between moves. You start it here. Nope. That's action card form two. Okay, so I'm not sloppy, but instead of going back fist think, punch think, as soon as the back fist hits, the punch is already coming. As soon as the punch hits, the first kick is coming, the second one's coming. The next move is already starting as you're finishing the one before. Okay, so I want you to take that first phrase of action from karate form one, I want you to do it five times like that by the phrase. Then come back to me. Okay, so now we're gonna do the first same thing with the very beginning of action karate form seven. I can just wear that here so I don't step on the brakes. So we start here. Again, this is not a new form for you guys. This is review, action, karate, form seven. We step out and block, crescent kick. Step out the other hand block, crescent kick, hands together. Step back, you're breaking a choke. Low block, double low block. So low block, punch, kick, and then push both hands out. Okay, so we're gonna do that by the count, starting from here. One, two, three. One, two, three. No, I think I left to move out of there. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is just like we did with action karate form one, before I finish the count, you need to be done with the, the move. So one, two, three, one, two, three, four, five. Okay, let's do it again. One, two, three, one, two, three, four, five. Okay, then we're gonna put the phrases together. So we're gonna take out the spaces between each move in the phrase. So we start here, the first phrase is gonna go. And then. Okay, so each phrase is one attacker and you're going through it with explosive speed. As soon as you take off for the first move, you're committing to the rest of the, the uh, phrase. I want you to do that five times and then come back to me, we have one more form. Okay, now the new one is Action Karate Form 10. Action Karate Form 10 starts where nine ended last cycle. So nine finished here. So for 10, we're gonna step to the back of the room Step out with your left foot into a front stance. Center block, rotate and punch. Back leg roundhouse kick. Okay, so I'm gonna do three kicks in a row and all my kicks are facing, are to the back of the room, the target's to the back of the room. So I did a roundhouse kick. I'm gonna do spin, pump crescent, spin, pump crescent. Okay, so I'll do that facing the other way so that you can see it. So if I finish action karate form nine here, I step out to front stance, center block, punch, back leg roundhouse kick, spin, pump crescent, spin, pump crescent. Okay, so we're gonna do that. I want you to practice that at that speed five more times, and then we're gonna do with it what we did with the other ones. Okay, so then you come back to me, and we're gonna do that as one phrase. First time we do it, as soon as I count, before I finish saying the word, you need to be moving. So we start here, one, two, three, four, five. Okay, so you can do that again, I'm gonna give you counts. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, then you're gonna do it by the phrase. So you're gonna start and you're gonna go. 
right through. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. As if it's all one attacker. And you have to, as soon as you commit to that first block, you have to commit to all the moves without stopping to think about it. Because if you stop and think about it, they're going to hit you. So we're here. Okay, so just like we did with the other forms, five times through. Okay, so we also have three self-defenses, one from each level. The beginner one that we're doing is wrap around. The intermediate one that we're doing is three attackers. And the advanced one that we're doing is side flop attack with waterfall. Okay, every self-defense has multiple parts. The very first part of self-defense is actually where you're defending. It's the important part. It's the part where you're making them let go or you're making sure that you don't get hit. Then the next part is generally control or violence and then finishing at the end. So when we do wrap around, somebody grabs your shoulder. This is review. This should not be new for you guys. Hands are up. Somebody grabs your shoulder. You trap, step back, wrap, punch. Okay, but what tends to happen when you learn this in a beginner class, a lot of you guys just went trap, step back, wrap, punch. That's not the punch I'm talking about. Okay, so I'm gonna do it facing this way so you can see what I'm doing. I'm gonna trap here and then whichever side they have, I'm gonna, I'm gonna step back with the other foot. I'm just gonna pull them off balance. I'm gonna bring my hand up towards the front then I'm gonna bend my elbow so that my elbow hits the inside of their elbow. Then I'm gonna come up underneath their elbow. So I'm still holding their hand, their elbow's here, and the punch is gonna go that way. It's an uppercut. It's going to break their elbow and dislocate their shoulder. Okay, I don't want you breaking somebody's elbow and dislocating their shoulder because they were practicing with you or because they were messing around with you. But if somebody is actually threatening you, you do what you need to get away. Okay, so we start here, hands are up, I don't want any trouble. Trap, step back, wrap, slam your elbow into the inside of their elbow, which bends their arm so you can come up underneath and punch. You've broken their elbow. Now you can punch and kick and cover up. Okay, so the important part of that is the trap step back. Because that's, because if they grab your shoulder and throw a punch, and you're standing there thinking, oh, what am I going to do now? You're going to get hit in the face. So I want you with your partner at least five times. They're going to grab your shoulder and you're going to trap, step back. Trap, step back. Okay? If they grab on the other side, trap, step back. So I want you to do that at least ten times. That same partner that you had who was holding pads for you when we were doing kicks at the beginning, I want them grabbing your shoulder ten times. And the part that I want you to practice is trap, step back. They actually happen together. You don't go trap, step back. You go trap and step back together. Okay? The next one that we're doing is three attackers. So two people have you this way. Again, this is not new. You learn this when you green belt. So two people grab you this way, and somebody's coming running straight at you. You're going to kick the person who's running, which is going to bend them here and then crest and kick their head. You're gonna turn, wrist lock these two people, pull them in. Front kick to this person, side kick to this person, spin elbow to this person, slide up side kick to that one. Okay, but that's not the, you, you should know that, so I want you to practice that. If it's not still in your brain, I want you to practice that a bunch of times. But what I want you to be working on this week is explosive speed. So somebody grabs your hands, and somebody's running at you. If you stop and you think about it, they're gonna hit you, and then the other guys are gonna pull you, and you're gonna be, you're gonna, well, you can't really, they're not really gonna rip your arms off, but if you're a cartoon character, they might. Okay, so somebody's running at you. Kick, 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 kick. 10 times. Okay, so I don't really want you kicking anybody hard. If there's only one person you can practice with, don't put people there. Just have the person running at you. And they don't have to, you don't have to kick them. Have them run at you with a target like this. Kick the target and then knock it out of their hands. But 10 times through that. Okay, and then the third one, this is your new self-defense. This is a side club with a waterfall. Okay, and when people do this, they tend to block with this hand because 
All you do is you can take karate and say, if somebody's swinging a stick at your head, what do you need to do? And the answer is always get out of the way. This one's not quite. You're stepping in because somebody's coming at you this way and attacking with the stick. Okay, so I'll show you this in both directions so it makes sense. But if they're attacking me, so say you're attacking me, okay, with a stick this way, I am stepping in and attacking the inside of your arm with my shoulder. Okay, this hand, for the time being, is just going to be that cute. You're going to step in and strike. Okay, so if I'm attacking you here with my right hand, I'm going to step in and strike. You're coming this way, you're going to step into me and hit. You're going to step really close to me and you're going to hit the, this part of my arm with your shoulder. So what you're doing is you're stepping inside. So I could, they could still smack you here with the stick, but it's not going to be nearly the damage that if you step back and they clip you with the stick. Okay, so that's the important part of this self-defense. They are going to attack and you're going to block. So they're going to attack and you're going to block. They attack and you block. Okay, now we're going to add this hand. This hand is not part of the block. This hand is just a check to protect your face. So if the stick keeps swinging around, it doesn't hit you in the face. So again, I'll show you both ways. If you are attacking me from here, I am blocking with my right shoulder and my left hand is up to check. Block with my right shoulder and my left hand is up to check. You can do this on either hand, but for learning purposes, the person who's attacking is gonna have the stick in their right hand and the person who's defending is gonna defend with their right shoulder. Okay, so if we're going the other way and I'm attacking you, you are going to block with your right shoulder, check with your left hand. Block with your right shoulder, check with your left hand. Block with your right shoulder, check with your left hand. Okay, so I want you to do the same thing with a partner. That's the important part of the self-defense. That's not getting hit. If you get hit with a stick, the rest of the self-defense can't happen. So if you really trust your partner, give them a stick. If not, give them a wooden spoon, give them a noodle, I don't care what you give them. But five, it's actually 10 times, they're gonna step in and attack, and 10 times, you're gonna step in and block and defend. Okay, chucks. Like, a lot of people think this is a really cool weapon. Uh, unfortunately, in Massachusetts, they're illegal and you can't walk around carrying them. However, if you have them in your car coming to karate class and you get stopped and you explain that you're going to karate class, you'll probably be okay. Put them in your bag. Okay, but we're going to start with a block. So you're going to start with them here, and I'll show you facing you and explain what I'm doing. It's kind of easier if you're standing next to me, so I'll show you that way too. I can't really, if I turn my back, you can't see what I'm doing, but I'm going to block to my shoulder. Okay, so if somebody throws a punch, I could actually be trapping the punch and pulling their hand away. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this hand, and I'm going to drop it down. So this chuck is going to stay where it is, and this one's going to drop down. And then the one that's up is going to come down outside the other chuck, underneath it, outside and underneath my elbow, and it's going to come to my shoulder. So if you're standing next to me, you keep your left hand up, drop your right hand. Left hand now is going to come outside and under the right chuck and outside and under the right elbow, and it pulls back to the elbow. Okay, I don't know how much you can see if we do it this way. Down, under, and back. Okay, so you're going to do it in and out, in and out, 10 times. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And then I want you to do ten on the other side. That might take some figuring it out. It's the same deal. If I'm going to go the other way, the left hand comes down, right hand which stays level, then comes under and outside the left hand, under and outside the left knee, I mean elbow and back up to here, okay? Then we're gonna put that together. Whether you're a one chuck person or a two chuck person, you're all doing the same thing right now. So hold both pieces of the chuck in your hand and draw a number eight. Okay, then take that eight and lay it on its side. 
and then keep drawing it like it's an infinity sign sideways. Okay, then you're gonna let go one piece. You wanna hold this as close to the string as possible. If you hold it out here, at some point you're gonna smack yourself in the face with the chalks. I'm not gonna be sympathetic because I told you you're supposed to be holding them up here. Okay, so you're gonna start here and you're gonna do figure eights. You don't want big arm circles. The motion here is really just from your wrist. And the catch, if you try to catch it and reach for it, you're gonna push it away. So all I'm doing, we, I think we practiced this last week when we did the overheads, the, the up and down strikes. You just open your hand and let it fall in. Same thing when you're doing a figure eight. I'm doing my figure eight and I just in and down as, so I'm gonna go down to the, down inside, outside, inside, outside, and then as I'm coming inside again, I just stop and open my hand and catch. If your strings or chains are nice and short, you're gonna catch them like this. If your strings and chains are really long, you're gonna end up catching the string. You're better off getting short ones. Okay, so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna put those two things together. You're gonna start here, shoulder, and then four figure eights. One, two, three, four, catch. And then bring it back to here. Other shoulder, dumb hand for most of you. Two, three, four, catch. Back to here. Right side, one, two, three, four, catch. Left side, one, two, three, four, catch. Okay, I want you to do that 10 sets. This is a set. Okay, so if you did all those with me, I think we just did four. So you got six more to do. If you didn't do all those with me, if you just stood here and watched, you gotta start at number one. You need to do 10 of them. Okay, gut sword form. This is my house sword. It's really short, so hopefully I don't take out the ceiling fan. Um, last week we practiced drawing your sword. We talked about how you need to have the business side facing up. You need to wrap your hands around so that when you draw, the blade comes out. So right now we're gonna start the form. I'll do it facing you and then I'll do it with my back to you so that you can follow along with me. Okay, we practice this strike too. The first, well, counts three, four, five are all exactly the same. We practiced those strikes last week. So we start here, I'm on my knees, sword. If I had a scabbard, which I don't, and if you're a gup, you don't have a scabbard, um, it's on your left hip. Right hand comes up and down. Someone is coming straight at me. I'm gonna grab my sword, I'm gonna pick my right foot up so that I'm on my left knee and cut across. The tacker's coming from that side. I'm going to pick my feet up and block and rotate my hips and cut cross shoulder to hip. We practiced these strikes last week. Then I'm going to look over my shoulder and there's somebody else coming from that side. So I'm going to take my right foot, drag it straight back and block and then rotate my hips and cut shoulder to hips. Third attacker is coming from the front. I'm not going to move my feet yet. I'm going to bring the sword up and then rotate my hips and cut. Okay, the, the cut comes in rotation because that's where power comes from. Okay, so we're going to do this again, facing in the other direction. I start here. Can you see me in the. Okay, I start here. Grab the sword. Right foot steps up, so you're on the left knee, cut straight across. First attacker comes from the left. Block. Rotate and punch. Second account, attacker comes from the right. Look, block, rotate and punch. Third attacker is coming from the front of you. Look at them, block, rotate and punch. Okay, at least five times. Um, I want you to understand, I want you to visualize what you're hitting, okay? So somebody is trying to hit you with their sword. Your sword is here, so there's just gonna catch and slide down. If your sword is here, if it's here, it's not working as a block. It's got to be here. And then your hips rotate so you strike at least five times through that. 